Hey, Theater One, it's Ms. Matt coming to you live from her house. I'm uh, here to tell you about medieval theater. We're talking about European theater from about the 5th century until the 16th century. Now, it was very important in Europe what was going on. The Catholic Church was in charge of everything. That's right, everything. Political, economic, religious. All of it centered around the Catholic Church. Now... It was also a big time for feudalism. Now, let me explain feudalism. If you don't remember from your social studies class, remember you had three levels of people. You had the um, the royalty, the aristocrats. They are the ones who had all the money. Then you had the religious people, your priests, your monks, your nuns, the pope, the bishop, those people. And then you had everybody else, which is the peasants. Now, the peasants were not allowed to learn how to read and write. Most of them didn't because it was way too expensive to go to school. No one could go to school. It took an entire year to write a book. This was before the printing press. And when I say write a book, I meant copy a book word for word. And when you screwed up on one page, you had to start completely over on that page. It was a very tedious and expensive process. So the only people who really could afford to go to school were the people with money. Uh, and uh, that means the Catholic Church. They had a lot of money back then. So every week, if you wanted to go to Mass, which you had to go to Mass, because if you didn't go to Mass, my goodness, you were probably going to be burned as a witch. So you had the priest who was sitting up here by the altar. There's the altar. Okay. Now, priest altar. Somewhere around the 7th century, they, they decided in Rome, the Pope in Rome decided all this stuff up here that was going on on the altar was way too holy for the priest to turn his back on it. So the priest had to face the altar and have his back to the congregation, which you all know in theater, that's a big no-no. We don't do that. Oh, by the way, did I mention that they're not even talk he's not even talking in the native language of the of the land no mass is said in latin that's right and the people in the congregation are not even allowed to respond the only people who can respond you see these guys right here they are either altar boys or other priests or monks they're the only people allowed to respond because honestly they're the only ones who are educated enough to speak latin so that was fun. But wait, there's more. Eventually it was decided that all of this up here was way too holy for any like normal person to see. So they put a wall right here. That's right. They built a wall. And every week, everybody went to church and listened to mass through a wall. It was great. It was a wall of muffled Latin. Don't you feel great about that? You shouldn't because it was stupid. That's right. It was really dumb. So the thing is the people in Rome are like, well, what in the world do we do now? Because we have this giant population of people. They can't read. So they can't go home and read the Bible. They can't write. You, I mean, what do we do? Uh, especially since theater had been outlawed. That's right. It had been banned. They thought that it wasn't a good idea. It was way way too evil but you know what it was the only thing that was going to help them in this situation so there are three types of religious dramatic plays that were put on during this time period you had your mystery plays which were biblical stories you actually know exactly what i'm talking about because if any of you have been in this kind of play that's right if you've ever been in a nativity play guess what that is a throwback to a medieval mystery play. Okay, that has been around forever. So if uh, that was you, like if you were a baby Jesus at one point in time, which usually when I'm teaching this live, this is what I would ask to see how many Jesus's, Jesus, I, Jesus. There's a lot of babies. So um, that's how I would ask. I would ask that. And usually I have at least one or even two per class period. Everybody. Got lots of Jesuses running around. Okay, so anyway, so 
mystery plays, biblical stories, miracle plays, the lives of the saints. That's to show them, you know, this is how you should live because the, you can have good people. Look at all these good people that you should be like. And then the last one was a morality play. Okay, now let me explain the morality play. So morality plays had one character that was in every single play. It was this guy right here. And this guy was the every man character. Sorry, ladies, we are a very new addition to the stage and we're not there yet. Sorry. So every man, now every man was tempted by somebody over here. It's not the devil because that's too much. It's too evil. We can't have people playing the devil. Come on. Then they're going to want to be the devil all the time. You can't do that. So instead, they did this. Instead of having someone play the devil, they came up with a way. Boom. Here we go. They would have someone personify one of the seven deadly sins and someone else play one of the seven heavenly virtues. Now, no matter what, every man always chose the way of good. Every man never gave in to sin and temptation. He was always a good guy. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. You have seen this before. This is a modern version of a medieval morality play where you have one of the seven deadly sins, you have one of the heavenly virtues, and right here in the middle, you have an everyman character, and every man has to listen to both sides and then make the decision. Of course, nowadays, or back then, Every man always went with the side of good. So go with the side of good. Yay, crunk. Wrong leader. Okay, anyway. I digress. So you have the seven deadly sins and the seven heavenly virtues. Now the way that it's listed right here, it is listed in order of badness from the, eh, this isn't so bad up here to, whoa, Nelly down here. So, we start off with greed. That one's pretty obvious. You want material things, okay? And the opposite of that is charity, where you give your stuff away. Lust. Lust is desire, intense longing. Uh, it does not always necessarily mean physical longing. It can be anything, of course. And the opposite of that is chastity. Now, sloth... Sloth, um, a lot of times is equated with laziness, but it's not always just laziness. It's something done without care. And uh, one of the quotes that I ran into when I was researching this was that evil exists uh, when good people fail to act. So that's, I thought that was, that was pretty, uh, pretty intense. So um, the opposite of sloth is diligence. You do your due diligence. You're, you're, you know, watchful of things that are going on in the world that are wrong and bad. And you, you're, you're going to do good because that's what everyone should do. Wrath, of course, it's anger. Grr. See, he's angry. Okay, so wrath is anger. And the other side of that is patience. Um, then we've got envy. Envy is just, of course, Jealousy, you want all the stuff that other people have. Um, and the opposite of that is kindness. We need a lot of that now. Kindness is so good. We need to be so kind. Anyway, uh, let's go down here to gluttony. Now, gluttony, a lot of people say, is only about food, but that's not necessarily true. It's just overindulgence in anything. Uh, it could be, you know, video games or shoes or... Um, I don't know, trying to get too many followers on TikTok, whatever. Um, and the opposite of that is finding balance, temperance, okay? Finding balance in your life, that's very important. Now, the big one, the worst one, the, the big old bad sin right here is the sin of pride, 
Okay, and I'm sure you're saying to yourself, but isn't it a good thing to be proud about things that you do and be proud of yourself and confidence, yada, yada? You're right. However, it's bad to be selfish, and that's basically what this means. Um, because this, being selfish, is the absolute worst. It's corrupt selfishness um, to the point where you don't listen to anyone, you don't, you only care about yourself and honestly that's like all of these things wrapped up into one package of pride and of course the opposite of that is humility okay now i'm sure you're asking yourself self why why are we um why are we talking about this what do we need to do well i'm sure glad you asked so for your assignment this week, you are going to create your own medieval morality play. That's right. Using one of the seven deadly sins and one of the seven heavenly virtues. And of course, right there, smack dab in the middle, you're going to have your everyman character. Now, this can be anything anyone this can be you with two sock puppets or two um like stuffed animals you can play all three roles you can use any app you like you can animate it you can use the sock puppet app you can do anything but it only has to be your minimum is 30 seconds your maximum is one minute. I am going to have more information on this in Canvas for your convenience and enjoyment. Uh, so you're going to create your own medieval morality play, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Isn't this exciting? It's been exciting. Don't worry, I am here to help you. So if you listen to this in your face, kind of looks like Kronk's face right now, just like, it's like, it's like, what? Don't worry, I'm going to help you out, okay? I'll see you in Canvas, I think. Yeah, sure, why not?